Let's fuck this one. That's yeah, let's go. Because we both fucked up now. So. Right. There's two, and then I come in. Yeah, but you didn't. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you came in on the G. I'm John Langford. I'm Sally Timms. Uh, we play in a band called the Mekons for, for a very long, long time. We've got our mate John Szymanski from Chicago with us. Hello. We'll play some guitar. And it's very nice to be in Peru. We could do a song uh, that we do with Skull Orchard that John plays in Skull Orchard with me and Sally has been a frequent guest with the Skull Orchard, which is kind of like a solo project I've had for about since the since I moved to Chicago really. So a lot of the songs are very depressing and and uh, about South Wales. This one's not it's about Johnny Cash, actually. So I met Johnny Cash a little bit in the nineteen nineties, nineteen eighties and uh, he told us when we met him that his career was going down the toilet and he was off to Branson, Missouri with a one-way ticket and he'd been sacked by his record label. And I couldn't fathom how Johnny Cash could be having any problems with his career because he was Johnny Cash. So I wrote this song. Stand still When you were young you thought you'd never Reach the crown of the hill Now what you gonna do with your money When you're fat and full Live for next week Live for last year Driver, you won't hurt them You just don't know how The man behind the curtain He satisfies the here and now How you gonna plan for the future When your latest record flops Live for next week Live for last year Live for next week Live for last year They take you to the building That you paid to build They throw you out in the dumpster might as well have had you killed I bet you wish you'd never seen these flatlands This shrinking, sinking space Live for next week Live for last year It's one, two, three, forever No one's here to stay Got you a present from the present day. You're never gonna hide from history, but it might hide you away. Live for next week, live for last year, live for next week. So this is a, a song that we recorded for a, I have no idea actually, Australian compilation? No, we did an album. We did an album. Oh, in Australia, no, yes. No, we didn't do it in Australia. They put it out in Australia, oh, okay. some extra tracks on it. We did an album for Bloodshot. Remember? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Bloodshot Records of Chicago, we did a John Langford and Sally Timms record, and we wrote some original songs for it. And this is one of them. It's called I Picked Up the Pieces. Crawled out 
of the deep end Wake up from a nightmare Refuse to believe it I picked up the pieces I picked up the pieces I slipped under the wire Scrubbed my name off the blacklist I know the creases I picked up the pieces I picked up the pieces Assemble them in, into, into a, a facsimile of my previous life. Yeah. That was better and superior to the life I'd lived. And are we in that or are we in the previous life? This is bizarre old world you're in now. <laughs> <laughs> Having consumed vast quantities of we, we Star, love Union Star, Union, Star Union Distillery. Star Union Distillery sponsored uh, John Langford, sorry, Tim's and Johnson. Yes, yes, I know. Are we allowed to say the word yeah. Star Union Distillery? We have advertising we could. We could even swear if you want. No, you I say. don't want to swear. You could say, I enjoy a good glass of bloody Star Union gin. <laughs> they don't make gin. <laughs> so, uh, so we, we were actually moving we did a, on. We had a, our movie was shown in, in Peru this afternoon. And somebody asked us a, a, an interesting question about mining disasters and mm -hmm. what the miners' strike was about in Britain in 1984, 85, whether it was about safety or not. But it wasn't really about mining no. safety. It was it was about politics and this song's... It was about jobs. It was jobs, about the destruction yeah, of the, uh, the, communities, really. the mining industry. And so it, for the Mekons, that was after a doldrum period why the Mekons kind of uh, got back to playing and becoming the band that it is now, yeah. I would say. You know, people left. The band that started in the late 1970s was a very different band to the one that exists now. So two of those people remain, John and Tom. And then the rest of us kind of came in after the band decided to start going out and doing benefits for the striking miners. So we wanted to play this one. John Zemanski will be working it out as we go, but it's a yes. Mekon song, so how hard can it be, eh? That's my first time. It's yeah. got three chords and it it's jams. got three chords and they're all in the same order over and over, over and again. Over. Okay. Well, I'm from I'm from South Wales, and that's a big mining area. And Tom, I think Tom wanted to vote this song, most of the song because I wasn't even around when they started doing the miners benefits I was off on tour in Europe and they got Steve Goulding and Lou Edmonds to come in and do the rhythm section yeah. we didn't have a rhythm section at the time I'd been the drummer and I didn't want to play the drums anymore oh. so they actually did a couple of miners benefits while I was off in Europe and then I came back and it was fantastic you know there was ooh, we've got a hot band and Susie was in it then Susie I think was in it before yeah, yeah. Susie, we'd done stuff with Susie and Kevin was in it so. anyway this is about um, the miners strike which was a year-long strike, which the miners lost, but it's a real significant kind of watershed moment in British political history because it's when the neoliberals, the monetarists, took over and mm. have still have been, been in power ever since, really. Mm. Margaret Thatcher. Mm. And Ronnie Reagan. And Ronnie Reagan. The wind and the rain beat on his bed As he stood in the darkness Wishing he was dead Only seventeen when he went down the mine Now the year he's been out on the line The 
weeds choke and the rust corrodes You'd think it had been 50 years since the place was closed But vengeance is not ours, it belongs to those Who seek to destroy us, how much more is there left to lose? Sad minor songs make me laugh. Yes. Yeah, there must be something in that. <laughs> Cup. What was it like bringing this vibe to Chicago? It was, the, we were really embraced in America. And people in England didn't really seem to care about that incarnation of the band that much. Mm. We were quite, you know, it was, it was all right in England and Europe. But when the Fever and Whiskey album came out in 85, it really, we were shocked. The distributor said, we're going to have to press up more. We've sold a load more. And, and it was New York, Chicago, San Francisco. Well, there's places that who is buying this record is it in New York mainly and then Chicago oh I know people in Chicago we should go there nice and then we all ended up living there nice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah it was it was I don't know people in America seem to get it more because I think they thought yeah. it was really well, peculiar I mean, they, that British punk rockers were playing this sort of know. sort of country and we had a violin player an accordion player so the band kind of became a very different sounding band in a way too. Yeah. yeah. It was actually far more hospitable to us here than it was. Well, we, we did fine in, in Europe in a way, but America really, really did welcome yeah. us in yeah. at that time. Again, you know, when, that, you know, when we came later, when we moved to Chicago, there was a lot going on then. People, a lot of people moved there, a lot of musicians were everywhere in the scene. And we were kind of, well, I went there kind of, thinking I was probably not going to do much music anymore. Mm. The League Guns were in the doldrums again, you know, con contractually. And, uh, uh, and it was strange to be sort of pulled into, you know, to, to do a lot of things. People kind of pushed me to do things, like nice. the shop people and other musicians. And I was really kind of like over it. And that sort of thing. But you were just kind of swept along in a way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was easier. Fun. You know, we could go on month-long tours and we had an agent and... You know, we just kept coming here. We were coming here like twice a year at certain points yeah, to yeah. tour. Nice. So. Above the dark highways On a black tar room Stood the sad milkman In love with the moon she filled up his window with soft milky light till he crawled up the chimney and into the night. But the moon she rises and the moon she falls. And her slow white eye sees nothing at all. Down on the sidewalk, a crowd gathered round, flinging up bricks and bottles to knock the boy down. He stood up above them with his hands in the air, calling up to the moonbeams, come let down your head. But the moon she rises and the moon she falls. And a slow white eye sees nothing at all. He wanted to feel like a bucket of milk or sweet summer winds on rolling green. 
he wanted to fly up from the room sailing up through the night winds to the arms of the moon but the moon she rises and the moon she falls and her slow white nothing at all But the moon she rises And the moon she falls And her slow white eye Sees nothing at all Just pick on whoever you want The sea turns black with robot's blood And a terrible beauty is born You animals can't see Your own captivity And you won't ever come home King of the pirates has left for the summit His house left wide open His photo cells flicker and die A pair of giant's hands Sink into the sand and Tear up the family Stooges we hide The graveyard scene looks fine The skull gets all the best lines And you won't ever come home now You won't ever come home Lovely assassin, go puncture the surface Dressed up like a lifeguard You watch as the bubbles break through The bridle and the bit Will lead you into the ditch And you won't ever come home Without warning Dressed up like a fireman With sparks and matches and oil La, 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 la La, 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 la La, 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 la La, 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 la. That was about the first Gulf War. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There have been so many Gulf Wars. There have been so wars, many man. Gulf Wars, but that before. was the first one. Yeah. So the it's first, an older song. Yeah. Um, but uh, unfortunately still relevant. Yeah. It's a bit depressing when you write things that are yeah, 25, 30 years old and they still apply. Well, robots spilling their black yeah, blood. Yeah, people digging into the earth to take... Yeah. Take someone else's whatever and pollute the planet and kill a load of people. So. You know, I, 
you guys are doing like this folk music, but then there's this electric element to it also, right? So it's like, you know, you're just totally immersed in this evolution, right? I think we've done a lot of different things that still have a thread. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, when people were doing punk, they always saw it as ground zero, but I think pretty quickly people worked out that actually it wasn't really ground zero uh, as far as the music was concerned. Yeah. Um, you know, if you look back uh, when the Mekons first recorded before I was in the band, they went out and found a studio by just looking in what was called the Yellow Pages. I don't know if you ever had that here, but, oh, yeah. you know, the, uh, so they just found a studio nearby and ended up in a studio with a, a recording engineer who'd recorded um, English folk artists and... Yeah. He said, what you're doing is the same as old English folk music. It's the same chord structures. It's the same subject matter. Um, you know, you're playing really primitively, but that's how people used to play. They used to just wander around like there'd be someone in the village who would play for the village. So music, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago had a really functional capacity. Uh, it was either for people to dance to or to tell stories. Mm -hmm. And um, so and then beyond that so those songs even though they seemed like three chord songs very simple structures they were saying something that had a long lineage and then through the history of the band we've always used different mediums you know we've made we've made electronic records we've made like weird we made a record with Kathy Acker the writer years ago you saw that in the movie and that's like a kind of lesbian pirate opera for want of a word. that's exactly what it is well, from yeah, her that's book exactly, that's what and that's it's what like, attracted us to it it's exactly it's fantastic <laughs> and it's very filthy so it's not one you would go swearing. to yeah it's a good. lot of swearing but um you know the idea was to use use lots of mediums or lots of types of music even if we couldn't necessarily play them very well but i still think that what we do is very song based mm -hmm. so it's the idea of a song and you can like translate that in many many ways. A song is a we're not we're not it. fantastic jazz musicians, you know. So we we have limitations to. Yeah, we got good things. musicians. We in have the band yes. now. We started with zero yeah. you know, musical skill, but it was at a time when punk happened, that was actually kind of like an advantage. It got drew a lot of attention. It's like, oh look, there's a band and they can't play. <laughs> it's kind of a ludicrous thing, but it was it was good. You know, but we have great musicians in the band now. But I think there's virtuosity and there's there's knowing how to let your your ability to play serve the song and serve mm. the story. And I think a lot of our, yeah, a lot of our songs, like I was saying before, a friend of ours said uh, we were like country music, which I think of as a form of folk music because our mm. songs were three-chord songs about drinking in bars and failed sexual relationships. And so mm. just like country music, so, yeah. Mm. But there's a pop, you know, and also there's a, there's a sort of pop politics to it in the style of old folk music where you tell you tell sort of truths and you yeah you tell stories and you you, you, you kind of connect with people in a conversation rather than browbeating them with a message you know so I don't know, I yeah think. i think that is how we do things and i think that did come out the that came out of the punk ethos that you were you know you weren't trying to be a star. You got up on the stage. You were communicating with the audience. There was supposedly no difference between you and the audience, although, of course, that never really is true because you're on a stage and they're not. But mm -hmm. the idea was that it was kind of a leveler. Um, and, and also, I just think, to quote my friend Pete Shelley, he said that the idea was that punk was about making things and human beings need to make things. And if you don't make things, then it gets really weird. And we don't make things any longer very much. You know, in the past, when you look at old photographs of like people on the streets in any major city, everyone's wearing kind of the same clothes, but they're not the same because they all made them themselves. So they had a template, but everything had variation. Yeah. And the same with furniture. There would be, you know, I remember my granddad being out the back like, drilling away in his shed with his work tools that people may physically made things with their hands you know they may not have been particularly useful but it's a really important <laughs> thing to make things with your hands you know Absolutely. and and now we just buy crap from department stores and everything's identical and so it's a kind of weird homogeneity that is that homo homogeneity is that the word mm -hmm. yeah okay mm -hmm. i don't know if it was yeah, hom homogeneity uh, it, it's, you know the idea that you can have variation and so I think that's what's really great about playing music 
that yeah. there are variations constantly even with the same band you play the same song there's a variation there's always like a slight variation so you know you well, music in general is an oral history that's passed yeah. down i think i really really hate the idea of bands like metallica thinking they can copyright a certain series of notes played in a certain yeah. order and yeah you know yeah that's a that's a modern invention of the pop world and you know just the idea that it's for making money is a, a modern invention of the pop right. world yeah. it's post-war invention what people did was they took the took people, someone to sing a tune and then they'd say oh i've got some words that will fit that tune and they tell a story and they the tunes would just you know pass down if you listen to you know blues music and folk music there's so much stuff that overlaps into different songs so many stories that are slightly the same like say frankie and johnny or something like mm-hmm. that. you know things are different but it's you know there's different ways of telling the story and it's beautiful you know i think someone like bob dylan gets that oh yeah you know you listen to some of his the albums he made like when the time of the basement tapes and stuff like that mm-hmm. it's like you know i mean he was a folk musician but he gets that it's not just like we're living in the moment you're, you're, you're kind of like the custodian of a history that mm-hmm. goes probably goes back to you know do you feel any like animosity towards uh not towards but uh in the era with sex pistols clash ramones television i not animosity no, I, I would yeah i would say i would like, between everybody like, no i don't think well there was we didn't even know those people they were like so much more well known than we were but i will say look in retrospect you know i i don't look back i, I thought it's a really exciting time and i was around quite a bit of that those bands were well, not the Sex Pistols, but the, it was quite dark. You know, I just remember it being just generally hostile. Was so, a, yeah, there was, there was a, the 70s were... It, it was, was a hostile Leeds, it was time. A nasty, it was a nasty atmosphere a lot of times. So a lot of the yeah. bands were friends, that, you know, that we knew up there. We were friends, but there was an edge to the gigs. You know, we actually packed in playing live at one point because it was... We went off to play in Europe. We, we played for... There was a gang of four in Leicester one night and somebody got stabbed. It was just like this is just too much, yeah. you know. But there was, was there a was lot a of violence. Yeah. There was a lot of violence. It was just it was a it was a dark time, and I think that's why the music sounds relatively dark. You know, no, it's funny you mentioned the Clash and the Ramones when we did meet Joey Ramone. Mm-hmm. He came to a Mekon's gig once yeah. and walked into the dressing room and went, "Can I buy you guys a beer?" And it was like. <laughs> One of the like great he moments. Eight, he, was like, he looked like he was eight feet tall. At the tall, cat club or whatever it was. And I was yeah. just like, yes, you can yeah. buy us yeah. And we went yeah. out drinking with Joey Ramon. Cause it was, I didn't was go my, that night uh, to my great, to yeah. my chagrin. And Str- Strummer as well. He had the other band, I had the three drums. He, he liked a single we did and he got us to open for the clash. And then it was kind of, you know, pretty friendly. You know. Nice. But on the whole, so, it was, it was kind of, not just with the bands, I just think it was a, it was, an aggressive and hostile time mm-hmm. that I've kind of forgotten about. And now I think maybe are we going back to that where everyone's just on edge because yeah. it's like that. That's what it felt like. I look back know? on it and I think that oh, was amazing. I wish you know, I wish I had an iPhone then. I could have filmed <laughs> yeah. all those bands and made loads of money. But also, I look back on it and I think I don't think I was very happy. No, mm. I remember you know, people I remember were kind of mean. I remember it being yeah. like it, it was being a mean young in it, but it wasn't. It wasn't easy. It was a, there was a mean. And then it was a lot, quite interesting from, you know, there's a lot of, in Leeds, it was just like, as you said, a talking shop. People were just dealing with like, they were talking about socialism, about feminism. It was like this constant discussion about, because they were all like art students who were going to basically a pretty left-wing Swear school. with your own genitals, Sally. Art students. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the sort of conversations we'd have. But yeah. So it was a kind of weird, convoluted time. Use, yeah. It was similar to now, you know, people were kind of working through an ideology. And when they're doing that, it's not necessarily easy. There's a lot of like kind of tangents that people are going off on and, you know, people are kind of freaking out or they're not or I don't know. So it was it was an odd time, but it was very, very exciting to be 18 or 19 and be around it. You know, thinking of this perspective. So obviously, you know, the Beatles come up from England, you know, spread all over the world. Then obviously, you know, quit being a band. But like that was when you guys were, you know, like late seventies, early eighties, that was like John Lennon was starting to make a comeback. Yeah. Then he gets killed. So like, you know, I, but like hit like some of these things you're talking about, like so he got involved in politics and you know, so like I, I'm sure that probably added to like the kind of what how you're talking about it was like a dark 
It was, a, it was a darker time, yeah. and I think he was quite interesting because I don't remember people didn't like the Beatles because of punk, but I think yeah. John Lennon was always okay because I John. People yeah. wondering where he was and why. Yeah. He, why yeah, he he, he clearly was like yeah. going out on a limb somewhere, and so yeah. that was quite because you know there was this whole thing of like we're never going to listen to older music. It was like this yeah. thing where screw all that, screw all these old rock bands and yeah. the Beatles and the Stones even, and there were a few bands that were still okay. Mm-hmm. And I actually think he was okay too because of his politics and because he had chosen to go a quite interesting route. Oh, yeah. But yeah. then, yeah, he got killed and, you know, the bands that were okay were like Motorhead and, mm. you know, they were acceptable, of course, because they are always acceptable. Who doesn't like we Motorhead? Like, though we were sacked by Virgin Records, we went to the pub and Lemmy was in the pub. Oh, we we no. told them, we said, what's up, lads? So, oh, we've got fired by Virgin Records. He said, right, let's go down and kick their bollocks off. I don't know if that's going to work. No, it's not going to get you re-signed. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was It was just a strange time. There's very, very, uh, like, there's a lot of orthodoxy going on. Mm. Like, so I'm just wondering now, so, like, when Nirvana kind of broke, you guys see that as, like, you know, punk music? getting more into the mainstream or did you mm-hmm. see it as like these young these no. young kids kind of no that was just seemed to me like just, i mean and i thought i remember the first time i heard smells like teen spirit i remember the hearing that song in the 9 30 club when we were playing there in dc and thinking what's this song it felt like you'd heard it a thousand times because it was just such an automatic like earworm song it was mm-hmm. calling on so many things but that tells you everything about it it was like a a massive like powerful hit which was not really about punk rock at all it was like the idea that it was going to blast out everywhere and clearly they weren't that happy with the idea of becoming megastars yeah. either but yeah. you don't become a megastar by not wanting to so yeah, yeah true. It's obviously a conflicted thing going on there but no i didn't see I that it just that. seemed like that that seemed like when when people really worked out how to sell stuff that was part of our culture. It was just culture. after we'd been yeah. on a major label, so we were kind of like oh. in the doldrums at that point. And there were some bands like we were on a label with Soundgarden and Soul Asylum, you know, at the same sort of time. And they were kind of precursors, I think, to those bands, to, mm. to what Nirvana did. But yeah. Nirvana really, you know, they hit the jackpot. So and at that time, I think I remember thinking that was quite interesting and funny that there was this rock band that was something like, because everyone was saying rock was dead. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to like rock music at that point. I would say with Goes this, on, with this like... new album, the Mekons put out an album this year that came yeah. out on a label in Germany, a, a European label, Glitterbeat, and they've done a really great job. Yeah. And I've enjoyed, you know, and Bloodshot are doing it in the States. And I've kind of, I don't know, I didn't know whether I'd, I'd have actually never usually read the press and things like that or mm-hmm. feel that's very important. It's, but it's, I feel quite, quite proud of this record. I feel I'm kind of glad that it actually. You know, sometimes you think, oh, maybe this one doesn't need. If this one has no interest in it, then yeah. probably that. Well, when you make mm-hmm. records, you know, I think I think with a band of our longevity, it, you have ebbs and flows constantly, mm-hmm. and so people pick up on something. And like this one has, for one thing, it's a good record, but it also has a good storyline, and so people want to talk about the idea of the desert and you know all the things that we were doing. So it allows people to have a story they can latch on to. So it's quite nice when you have a la- two labels working to help that happen. But, you know, I'm sure that we'll go through phases in the future when, you know, the same people write about it, but not too many people write about it. It's so some more touring coming up this year? Yes, we're, coming, nice. we're touring with the Mekons in July in the U.S. So we'll be in Chicago uh, for three days, and then we are going to... East Coast, West Coast. East Coast, West Calgary Coast, Folk Calgary Fest. Folk Festival and done. But we only do two and a half weeks, so it's compact. Well, you were just in Europe, too. Yeah, we did two and, like and a half weeks in there. I think we're too old for this. And it's like, oh. I think we are I, too old for it, but we're not going to stop. When I came back, I was like, <laughs> no, I, 